So in today's tutorial, we're going to be looking at how to make some hand-drawn animated titles in After Effects, but the process starts before that. Now, first we need the hand-drawn titles. So you can either do that by making them in Photoshop, in hand, or on the iPad as I did in Procreate, which super simple process. All you really want to do is start with some text that you have. You can do it freehand or have a base text like I use for this example. And then you want to go ahead and just trace it kind of loosely, kind of make it a bit funky, wobbly, you know. Make sure that it has character to it. That's the most important part. And then you can add shadows, highlights, whatever you feel like. But once that's done, you want to have that in Photoshop or if you made it in Photoshop, you already have it there or scan it in and make sure that it is on a transparent background like we have here in Photoshop. Now that I have that, I just want to make sure that I have it saved and then I want to hop into After Effects and then I'm going to drag in my PSD into a 1920 by 1080 canvas. So now that we have our text in After Effects, what we're going to go ahead and do is going to, I'm going to mask out the two words so we can have a bit more control of the animation and create some more varied results. So for the first one, I'm just going to name this Teach and select the Teach. Now then I'm going to duplicate the layer by clicking Command D and then I'm going to highlight the mask and I'm just going to move it over. So now we have one layer that's Teach and one layer that is Tapes. Now I'm going to start with the teach one, I'm going to go zoom in so I can see what I'm doing and then I'm going to use the puppet tool to animate the text and you don't have to go super crazy with the points and with this point it will affect everything that's to the right of it so if we drag this down you can see it kind of moves everything so if you place a pin in between these two you can see it doesn't have nowhere near the same drag on it so you can use pins to either control animation or where you don't want animation to be. By keeping that in mind, you can create some more pins around to keep the animation a lot more separate from each letter if you don't want to separate each letter into its own layer. So now I have my pin, my popper pins for the teach one. I'm going to click U to bring up all the keyframes and I'm just going to select them all. I'm going to move about 12 frames forward, so half a second, since we're on a 24 frames per second timeline. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to play around with uh, some of these and just kind of see what kind of results I can get. And I want to keep it very fun. I want to keep it kind of random and all over the place just because that'll give us some better results. And really here, I'm just going for something that looks kind of absurd and kind of play with the shapes and uh, the positioning of the letters. So it looks a bit wonky, but if we go ahead and select all the keyframes and then apply some easing to it, we can go ahead and see that it's a pretty nice animation. It's kind of snappy, which is perfect. If this is all you want, you can leave it in that, but you can also go ahead and add some animation to the positioning, which we're going to do. So I'm just going to set a keyframe at 12 frames because that's where the animation ends. And I'm just going to take drag this down a little bit so it kind of moves upwards. And if we play that back with the same easing, it just adds a little bit more character and movement to the text without being exaggerated or over the top. And then you pretty much just have to do the same thing with the other text. And we're just going to place some pretty quick pins here. No need to make it super, super crazy. So I'm going to click U and I'm just going to make sure I'm at the beginning of the timeline. And then I'm just going to go ahead and use my cursor tool again to kind of obscure the shapes a little bit. And one thing to keep in mind is if you want to make it even more interesting, you can do contrasting movement. So if we make sure that this almost goes up a little bit more than the other one since it's coming from below. You can go ahead and add some more fun to it that way by introducing some contrasting movements. So this is what we have here. And then once again, I'm just going to select the keyframes, apply the same easing. And of course, I'm going to animate the position. So I'm going to set a position keyframe and then I'm going to go ahead and drag this text up and just make sure the easing is the same. And now we have this. You can always go a step above and add a little bit more to it. One thing I like to do is add an adjustment layer and then add a turbulent displace. And then if you go in here, I'm just going to set this to eight and eight just to get some sort of movement. And then I'm going to animate the evolution or the random seed, I should say. So I'm just going to alt click the cycle in the text box that comes up. I'm just going to type time times five. And that should give us just a little bit more movement. As you can see, if I zoom in here, it's just some very slight movement to it, which just adds to the hand-drawn feel of it. Now, that's one thing we can do. We can also go ahead and add some more texture to the individual layers. So if you open up the text, and since we have it all in the same pre-comp, it'll apply to both sides. And I'm just going to drag this in it. And now scale it down a little bit, right about here. And then I'm just going to animate the position, the scale, and the rotation. 
and then we're gonna cycle that. So I'm gonna go about 12 frames forward. I'm gonna scale it up a little bit, rotate a little bit, scale it up a little bit more, kind of reposition it. And the main thing here is you just wanna make sure that you keep it moving, get some different areas of the texture all lined up just to make it a bit more interesting and so it doesn't look like it's looping. So I'm gonna select our keyframes, right click and toggle hold. Hold keyframes basically keep the value until the next keyframe comes so you won't have any of the movement in between the keyframes. And now that we have that, we can go ahead and alt click on the stopwatch for each one. And we're just gonna use a simple loop out um, expression which is just gonna keep the animation looping all the way until the end. So it just loops forever, so you don't have to manually keyframe the whole thing. We are gonna change the blending mode, and it's always a good idea to play around with this because we have different textures on top. So if you hold shift and then use the minus button, you can shift through different layer modes without having to click them individually, and it just allows you to get a quicker preview. And now you can see our tech the texture does bleed out of the text. So what we're gonna do is select this little thing here, which is basically just like a mat or like a mask and layer. So you can see how it affects only the text. And now we're just gonna go ahead and find one that looks good for our text or just based on what you like. And you can get some really interesting results like this one, which is super gritty, super grungy and a bit dark as well. I'm gonna use soft light just because we get some of that subtle detail in the shadow areas without too much in the highlight areas. And we just get a little bit of that text in there. So if you play this back, you can see it just, it's very subtle the way it animates. And now that we have the texture applied to the text, we can go ahead and play it back and see kind of what it looks like. And it already has come so much more to life, but there's a couple more things I want to do to add a little bit more to the feel of the very textured and papery look that we get from this. And I'm gonna go ahead and add an adjustment layer with the transform, and then I'm gonna keyframe the position, and I'm just gonna add posterize first, and I'm gonna put in six for six frames per second. And then we're gonna add a wiggle, and just do 200 comma two, just for some slight wiggle to the camera. And if you're working with a layer with a background, you wanna set this to 101 since the way to compensate for the movement. Otherwise, you can just leave it blank, it won't matter much because we are working with a transparent background anyways. Next thing, to add a little bit more to that papery texture feel, I'm gonna add an adjustment layer with a posterized time and I'm just gonna set that to 12. Now, if you go ahead and play it back, you can see that it feels more stuttery partly because of the um, transform or the camera shake that we've added to it, but also the posterized time helps it give it a more hand animated feel, which is perfect for this kind of text. With that being said, that's pretty much all for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed watching along and I hope you learned some new techniques or at least gave you some interesting ideas of how you can use hand drawn titles and animate them very easily. It's something I like to do, especially because it makes it more unique and just adds a bit more character to the project. But thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And um, I'll see you next week. Thank you.